my zucchini are super tiny and yet look where'd it go there they are that is what eggs look like You can just kind of knock them off. See? And these are these plants are tiny. You can also use a uh, tape or something to get them off. Oh, and here's the culprit right here. Those are the little squash bugs. And guess what they're doing? They're making my channel pornographic, and that's just gross. So, they get to go away. And I might need to get some dill for this garden. I don't have any in this garden. I have it in the squash beds and I don't see any of these over there. Let's check over here. I did squish two yesterday, so that's why I thought, oh, I better come look and see what the status of my zucchini is. And these are still pretty small, but they're getting their color back, so that's good. a daily job. Okay, I think we look okay here. Oh, look at that. Right in plain view. They didn't even try to hide it. I see eggs at the bottom. And these are tiny. I don't know if you can see. See that? That is usually what the borer eggs look like. So I might have to go ahead and get these wrapped in some foil. So now I need to check the other ones. I was kind of hoping that with a new location, maybe I wouldn't have that issue. So that's proving to be possibly false. And I did buy a trap for the male moths, so that may have to go out. Yeah, but these plants are so tiny that, uh, oh, and there's another one of our little, little friends. I don't want to miss him, so hold on. This is where your sandals come in handy. <clears throat> oh, oh, he's making a run for it. He's making a run for it. <clears throat> Last year, I used to just use my shears and cut them. They're kind of hard to kill. <sighs> As you can see. All right, fine. <clears throat> there we go. I think we got him this time. The only place they are is on the zucchini, which is in another bed where there's no dill. So, and this one here, you know, I haven't seen, I looked over here, I didn't see any over here either. So, that appears to be working. It appears to be working. And look, 
got some squash here. This one's finally big enough to produce. I will say that these are struggling for a while and if they are still really small and they start producing flowers, I've been pulling those off. Not this one, because he's getting big now, but actually they all might be okay now, but for a while they were pretty little with flowers and I was like, no, nope, you are not big enough to sustain flowers. In fact, here, see these? These aren't even trellising yet. I'm pulling them off. Why do we do that? So that the plant can focus on growing its root system. It can focus on growing taller and it won't focus on fruit because right now these plants are too little to sustain fruit. They're just way too little. So can you imagine a cucumber on these plants? That just, they'd never work. So I'm pulling them off. Hoping that helps. Um, you know, I got a little bit of a late start with my cucumbers because we had a very late cold snap. So these have been struggling ever since, but I am doing everything I can to bring these back. And that is one of the things that I'm doing now is, is clipping off their, their flowers. Now, this one here, what's going on here? This one's getting bigger. This one might be starting to... I'm gonna pull the flowers off it. Even though he's finally starting to vine, there's even a little baby one here. Yay! I love when you see the little female flowers. They're so cute! But, we are not in a place where we are ready for those. Um, in one of the gardening groups I'm in, they were asking about these little, see the little things coming off of there? Those are actually part of the fruit. Those are not eggs. That's part of the fruit. And when they're little like this, they kind of come off. Um, if you've ever noticed the cucumber has kind of like a, a dimpling pattern on it, that's what those are. I don't know what the purpose is. Somebody could probably educate me on what their purpose is. It might be just to protect the fruit when it's young. Yeah, I know. Pulling these off seems like, oh, geez. But in the long run, I'm hoping that that will help the plants. They're just not big enough for this yet. So this is the bed that had the squash bugs in it. And I came out. It's been two days since I filmed together the other portion of this video but I did go out and get some more dill and I put three of them in this bed and so far I don't see any more squash bugs which is amazing so I mean I'm going around and checking again making sure you know there's no eggs on the undersides of the leaves the other thing I did is I've mounded some of the dirt up onto the stems. I try to keep them pretty covered. Um, I'm still debating if I want to go ahead and do the foil method. And what that is, is uh, the foil, you wrap it around the base and then they can't get inside of the plant. Because what they do is they, not the squash beetles, but squash borers anyway, they go down to the base and they lay eggs. And when the eggs hatch, the worm goes inside and eats out the whole stem and what happens is the plant then can no longer get nutrients or water so it dies and you'll know if you have that problem because they will flop on the ground one day they'll be fine the next day all of a sudden they look pretty sad and you'll go what the hell is going on if you look at the base you could usually see what they call frass and um, I've shown it before I think in uh, last year's videos it's too early to show this year but uh, if I encounter it, I will, I will let you guys know. But I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that I'm doing to head some of, the, some of the squash critters off. The first is obviously the dill, which I did a video the other day on that. So um, I showed it to you in the other squash bed. This is the zucchini and strawberry bed, <laughs> which normally I don't plant that together. But um, 
I did that this time because my strawberries are struggling. So I'm taking advantage of the space while I've got it. One of the things that I used last year that many of you probably found my channel because of, and thank you for subscribing and watching. I appreciate that. Um, but I had found these traps. It's called a Viva trap. It's got a little pheromone thing in it. It says right on here, squash vine borer trap. So I got them again. Now I'm in a new location. I'm really hoping that it won't be as big of an issue. It was where I was before because I had been gardening there for five, six years and I was in town. Like I think there were other people that had gardens around. There may be gardens around here as well, but I'm in a new location and I've yet to see one of the borer moths. They look kind of like a wasp, believe it or not. They've got like little red markings on them. But anyway, because I may have found an egg the other day, I'm still unsure if that was a borer egg because I haven't seen the, the moth. But just to be safe, I think I'm going to go ahead and do one of the beaver traps. So I'll show you guys what this looks like again. <laughs> I will also be sure to put the link where I got this in the description of the video. Okay, so when you open it, you get instructions. Very important. You get two traps that are kind of sealed up and you get two packs that look like this. These are your little pheromone thingies. I don't know what you call them. They're a little plastic thing that has pheromones on it. Okay, oh, they call it a lure. I'm sorry, I'm looking at it and it says lure. So it's a pheromone lure. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open this up. I have a small garden, I'm only going to do one. I will save the other one if I feel like I need to put another one up. So I'm going to put these back in there. Okay. You get a thing that looks like this. You pull the bottom. It's as easy as that. Um, oops, I forgot to grab the, the little tie. They have it twisted on both of them. It comes with a little twist tie that you can use for hanging it. So, I only need one. And then our little lure. You open this guy up. what it looks like and you place it somewhere inside of here I try to go as far to the middle as I can without getting stuck to it <laughs> okay kind of short because I have a little shepherd's hook I'm going to put it on so okay now one thing to note <clears throat> this will get the male boar moths um, from what I understand I don't think it will get the females the females are the ones that lay the eggs however I don't know how their little process works but I figure getting one part of the species is probably good um, and will probably help. So that is what we're doing. We're putting this out for the male moths. We don't want to draw them to our garden. Now, last year, I think I put them in my garden, like very close to the squash. It probably wasn't the best idea, but I did get a ton of squash last year for the first time. I did the foil, I did these traps, and I did um, cups that form like a little collar around it that seemed to work. All of these things together definitely helped. And then when I did get something in there, I used BT. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. But for now, okay, 
lighting this right here. We will check this periodically. My hope is that nothing finds it and that means there aren't any in the area. But in the off chance that they are in the area, this will let us know. But I also wanted to show you how far I am away from the gardens. So I'm a good 40, 50 yards away. And again, that is to make sure that they're drawn away from the garden, not to the garden. The next thing that I'm gonna show you guys is something that I just learned about last year. It's called BT. I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> it is a biological insecticide. And what that means is this is still organic for your garden. Controls worms and caterpillars on fruits, vegetables, ornamentals, and shade trees. So this is going to work awesome for our hornworms, armyworms, and for the boar moth grubs that get into the squash. It's not a chemical, this is bacterial. So what this does is you spray this on your plants, the caterpillars eat the plant, which has the bacteria on it. The bacteria gets in their system and it kills them. So we are going to make some of this up. And I've got a water bottle here with 25 fluid ounces of water in it. I read the directions and for a gallon, it is four teaspoons. I had to do a little math and there's 128 gallons in a, or 128 fluid ounces in a gallon. I'm gonna shake this too. There we go. Um, this has 25 fluid ounces on it. So we're looking at about one fifth of the amount that they ask for which is gonna be just less than a teaspoon. So I'm not being super scientific with my measurements there. I'm going to just under the teaspoon mark and I am going to untwist this cap here. Can you see? It is a brown liquid. I don't know if you could see that. You'll see it when I pour it. Doesn't take a lot. This will only hurt caterpillars. This will not hurt your pollinators. And it will not hurt the, uh, the beetles unless they're in their larval stage. So there we go. Now, we are in the heat of the day right now. I'm up on my deck sweating my butt off. <laughs> um, so I'm not going to do this right now because I'll be spraying the plants. It is best to do it either early in the morning or late in the evening. Typically I do it more late in the evening than it sits on all night. If you spray it on during the high heat of the day, you run the risk of steaming your plants and also burning your plants. So I've tried to really make it a point not to water or do anything of this nature when it's super, super hot out. So it's a little early now, we'll be back and uh, I will show you how we're gonna apply this. Okay, we are finally at an area of the night where the sun is kind of going down over here. So I've got my BT that we just made and I'm going to spray our plants now. For the borers, they like to be toward the base. So I am going to spray the base of my plants. You do not want to do this if it's going to rain. <laughs> if it rains, it washes it off. <laughs> so look at your weather forecast before you do this and make sure you're gonna have some time where it's dry enough for this to sit on the plant. But what this will do is kill really those little yucky caterpillars. So I am also going to come over here and probably do a little spraying of the tomatoes. Thank you. 
Anyway, good luck. Try some of these things out, see if they work for you, and I hope you get plenty of squash, zucchini, and tomatoes.